Letting go. Well, this is something that we all struggle with. Whether it's a matter of letting go of a child as they go off to college, whether it's a matter of letting go of a parent as they pass on, whether it's a matter of letting go of an identity that we had that was wrapped up in a career that we had and now we're retiring and so we're no longer that identity. Whatever it is, letting go is always difficult. Letting go is always, always, always a, a challenge. And the only way to do it, especially in this case when you're looking at the child and he's going, is to recognize that you're always with him. You're always there may not be physically there, but that which you've given him is there in him. And also to recognize that he's being guided and led. There's, there's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful poem by Khalil Gibran titled, I think it's just titled like On Children. And I'm not going to do it justice because I don't remember it word for word, but it speaks so beautifully about how your children have come through you, but not of you. So we think of them as extensions of ourself. And in many ways, we've, we've made that, that relationship. It's, you know, Not just that we love them, but that they are sort of a piece of us. And he reminds us, they've come through you, but they're not of you. And goes on to emphasize what each child comes into this world with. And how time moves always forward through through the youth, through the children, that they're the ones who are pulling it forward. And he he ends it by speaking about how, but don't worry, because God loves the bow from which the arrow comes as much as God loves the arrow that's flying through the sky. And it's a beautiful, beautiful metaphor. You should just um, just Google it. I'm sure you'll find it really easily. It's On Children by Khalil Gibran. But the, the metaphor is so beautiful about how we've just been given this sacred opportunity to have them come through us. They're not of us. They never were ours. But we were given this beautiful opportunity to mold them, to have them, to be with them. And now, like the arrow that comes from the bow, it's going off in the world. But but remember that where that arrow goes, this isn't part of the poem, this is my taking it now for you, is where that arrow goes is in large part... Not 100%, but in large part based on the bow, the person who's pulling the bow. And so it's not that they're now out of our hands. It's not that we don't, you know, have any of that connection you do. You're the one. You're the one who has literally molded them in the arrow and bow analogy strung them up on the bow, you are the bow, that's been pulled back. And the direction now that they're going is the direction that you've given them. And so to have faith in that, to have faith in knowing I've given them this direction, but also to remember they all come into this world with their own package. You know, the example that I always give is, If you've got an apple seed, you may plant it in the most fertile ground. 
most wonderful ground. You may water it in the best way, shine the best sun on it. But if you were hoping for peaches, you're never going to get peaches out of that apple seed. The best you're going to get in the best soil, with the best water, with the best sun, is an apple tree. But if in your mind you were hoping for peaches, you're never going to get it, no matter how good the soil, how good the water, how good the rain, I mean, how good the sun, no matter how many peach mantras you chant over it, no matter how much you scold it and send it back to its room until it can come out as a peach, it's an apple seed. And so we hold both of those aspects together. One, the awareness that I am the bow, that has strung it up, that has sent it on its way. I know the direction. We know where it's going because it's based on you. But it's also a seed that has come into this world with its own, its own karmic package, its own dharma. And so... Don't worry, you've spent two decades, basically, molding, watering, shining the sun in fertile ground. The seeds blossom. It's going to be fantastic. He's going to do great. He's going to do absolutely great. And you're still there with him. So it's not about it's not about letting go as in he's now gone forever. It's just letting go of the control. Letting go of that constant knowing of exactly where he is, which you're going to have to. Cuz if you start calling, you know, 20 times a day, then it becomes difficult. But letting go with the faith of knowing what you've what you've filled this seed with. And who that seed is. I'll tell you a personal story. When I first decided to come back to India, to move to India, I was 25. And as Pooja Swamiji was saying on the Ghat, I had graduated from Stanford. I was then in the midst of a PhD program. And came to India traveling, had this incredible experience stayed for a few months. Swamiji made me go back for a while. But I knew I needed to be here. And everybody told me, you're making the worst mistake, the worst mistake, you know, you shouldn't go, you shouldn't go. But I knew it was right. And I asked my dad how he felt. And because he, he, he's very, very calm, very beautiful, very divine. And he hadn't said much. And I wanted, you know, to just really alone find out from him how, how he felt about this. And he said, you know, in 25 years, because I was 25, he said, in 25 years, you've never made a decision that I think was the wrong decision. He said, I don't understand this decision. But just because I don't understand it, who am I to assume that suddenly you started making wrong decisions. Which is an amazing, amazing thing for the father of a 25-year-old who's just announced that she's, you know, leaving her PhD and she's moving to live in an ashram in India to say. But I share the story with you because for me that's really the, the most incredible, perfect ideal of parenting is I know you. I trust you. It's not about micromanaging every decision. It's not about asking you every day, who are you going out with? Where are you going? What time are you going to be home? What are you going to do? Is your homework done? You know, um, it's I know you. You're my son. I trust you. Which means that the decisions that you make 
are the decisions that are going to be right for you. Doesn't mean they're going to be exactly the same decisions that you made when you were in college. College in America is very, very different. Really very different. It's going to be a completely different life from what you lived when you were in university. So the decisions are going to be different. But the sanskaras that you've given him, what you have, the water and the sun and the fertile soil for 20 years, he's going to be great. And my, my last piece of advice to you is, this is really the time to shift from being father to being friend. And what I mean by that is he should feel free and open to tell you anything, especially because he's far. You should have a relationship with him in which he's not worried, ki, oh my God, bot naraj ho jayenge, achha wo. It, because then what will happen due to the distance, it's one thing when they're living at home. You see at dinner, achha, why are you not speaking? Tell me what happened. They go in the room. Maybe you don't get the answer till breakfast. But they're under the same roof. But with the distance, if he has fear in his mind about sharing a concern, sharing a question, because maybe the context of it is not exactly something that he knows that you're going to like, so he's sort of afraid to tell you what he's got a question about or afraid to share something, you don't want that. You want him to know he can tell you anything. And you're not going to be mad you're going to always love him. You're going to always support him so that he can feel free to talk to you so that he doesn't wind up in, you know, the university counseling services to get advice from someone who doesn't even know him because he's afraid to talk to his parents because, oh, my God, what if they, you know, don't approve and get mad? So really, before he goes, sit him down and have a conversation about, okay, We've done our best. We've done our best. For 20 years, we've whacked you like a potter, wax a piece of clay to become something. Now you're, you've become. Now we want to support you. Share with us. Tell us. We want to we wanna be close to you. So really, just keep those doors as open as you possibly can. And that's going to be hard because there are going to be things he's going to tell you that your immediate instinct is going to be, oh my God. And you, that's fine between the two of you. When you hang up the phone, you can you know, hold each other and cry and say, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But don't say that to him. Let him feel, Wow. I was so nervous to tell them, but oh my God, they were so supportive. Because then you can really guide him through difficult situations. He has to feel open enough to share the difficult situation with you. And from your side, just have that faith and just love him. And the truth is, it's not even really that much of a letting go because these days with the communication, you, you're in touch constantly. You never had the level of control that you think you had anyway. That control is an illusion anyway. If he was wanting to do things, he would have done them. There's always a way. So just keep coming back to your faith. Just keep coming back to that faith of knowing what you've given him. And then open the channels in such a way that that relationship now in its new way just blossoms and blossoms and blossoms and blossoms. <laughs>